Right, first gear, clutch. What could go wrong? Okay, well, welcome to our classic car now. The plan today is to see if the 1940 Dodge truck will fire up. I haven't run it for a few months and it desperately needs a wash. It gets very dusty in here, so uh, if I can get it to uh, fire up, then uh, let's see if we can give it a clean. Right, let's clamber on board and see if there's any sign of life. I've primed up some fuel into the carburetor because it tends to run back into the tank and it's a long way to churn the fuel through. So got two battery cutoff switches here, one for 6 volt, one for 12 volt, and the starter circuit is on 12 volt, everything else is on the original 6, so let's see if there's enough juice left in this battery. It's, it's obviously a few years old now, and I'm not quite sure it's fully up to strength, but let's see. The theory is that it'll start up on the fuel that's in the carburetor and pump up the fuel from the tank. And hopefully then it'll run off the fuel that's in the tank, but we should just have to see. Okay, floor operated starter button down there. So. so that was running off the fuel that I poured in. So let's see if it'll pull up some from the tank. I think it sounds like it needs to clear its lungs out a little bit. And the fuel is quite old. and knock that choke off a bit. I think she's smoothing out a bit now. She's warm through a bit now, so let's see if it'll actually drive out.
everything seems to work. It's not been outside for quite a few months, so it's, uh, it's nice to just warm everything through. Check the brakes, clutch, the brakes are hydraulic, the clutch is mechanical. But yeah, it's really dusty, it needs a really good clean. There was some building work last year next door, which involved cutting breeze blocks and things like that. So uh, it got really dirty because of that. There's just clouds of dust blowing over and through the garage, which didn't really help matters too much. So uh, that was one of the main reasons to get the old girl out. Give her a bit of a sprucing up. For anyone that's new to the channel or the website, um, just a potted history of this truck. Um, the restoration of it was documented on the website about 10 years ago and there's still a few jobs to do as with anything like this but the majority of it's done. It came over to the UK in late 1940 as a kit of parts from the Dodge plant in Detroit. It's an American Dodge left-hand drive, there were Canadian Dodges and they were right-hand drive. It's a three-ton VK62B and it was part of a consignment of vehicles that were intended for the war effort early in the Second World War. This particular example was sent off to Mulliners of Birmingham and they bodied it as an RAF crew bus and it served somewhere on a bomber or a fighter base for the duration of the war. Some of them were later converted to be like mobile training vehicles but quite where this one was during the war I'm not certain. Uh, it's mainly it's post-war history that I have all the details of. It was bought sometime in the late 1940s after being sort of decommissioned, if you like, from the war effort by a sort of part-time racing driver called Dennis Poor. And he, pre-war, used to race a supercharged MG. And in the sort of mid-late 40s, he ended up taking the ownership of a Grand Prix Alfa Romeo, an HC35 Alfa. 1935 3.8 straight 8 engine twin superchargers the works and this was converted into a race car transporter and he used it to carry mainly the Alpha but there were one or two other cars that he did use on occasion but it was mainly the big old Alfa Romeo and he used to compete in sprints, hill climbs, circuit races, VSCC circuit races and so on until 1955 when he retired from racing and everything got squirreled away. He didn't seem to sell anything. He just basically put things in his barn when he'd stopped using them. And I believe the barns were full of old cars, not just this, but the Alpha was there and so on until the late 1980s when he died. And it all got split up. I found this dumped at Donington Park, looking very, very sorry for itself way back in 1995. And I just couldn't believe it. It was just sat there rotting away. The back doors had fallen in, the sides were crumbling. And it was just in a right old state. So I made some inquiries. In those days, pre-Goodwood Revival, there wasn't the interest in the old transporters that there seems to be now, whereas everyone's recreating transporters. Mercedes have done it with their high-speed transporter and various others have been built up to look like period transporters. But this is probably one of the oldest original, if you like, race car trucks still around that was used in period in the sort of 40s, early 1950s. Um, at first I assumed it was probably an ambulance or something like that during the war that had been converted, but then I found out later that it had actually been an aircrew bus for the RAF. In the back here, there was, there was loads of seats and etc. in there. I managed to get hold of faded copies of the original blueprints, the drawings. Um, someone sent me those, they found them in an archive somewhere. So that confirmed who built it and for whom. But yes, it was a complete wreck when I found it. I think another winter or two outside and it would have just been beyond hope. It was in a terrible state. But when I saw it, just dumped full of rubbish, bin bags of rubbish, old tyres. Like I say, the back door, one of the back doors had fallen off. 
all the sides you could sort of lean against them crush them and it was just all crunching and going making some pretty unpleasant noises obviously it wasn't a runner but I just took pity on the old girl and I was able to store it in various barns and hangars until such time that it could go away and be restored because it's the problem with vehicles anything that you restore you need several times this footprint of the vehicle just for all the parts once you've dismantled it so uh, that's a sort of potted history of this particular lorry in addition to the hc35 it did on occasion tow an aston martin db3 and a connaught occasionally he'd race more than one vehicle over the weekend at a particular meeting so the alpha would be consigned or relegated to the old trailer which i've got for this which is a pre-war design a pre-war high-speed trailer it was called so the Alpha will go in the trailer and the modern shiny new racing car, whether it was a Con Auto A-Type or an Aston DB3 or DB3S, will go in the back of this. I don't think that happened too often, using both the trailer and the truck, but it did happen on occasion. And the reason I know that is I was able to track down the two team mechanics who used to drive this lorry just after the war, and they were able to give me all manner of stories about it, what things they did, things they experience while driving this in the sort of late 40s early 1950s and so on to race meetings up and down the country he was based on the south coast not far from goodwood goodwood was his local circuit and but they used to go up to the top of scotland up to charter hall rest and be thankful bowness a long long way away and uh, yeah they used to go all over the country obviously at a fairly sedate pace it used to run on trade plates it was never road registered when dennis poor was using it um and i believe the fiddle was that if you ran on trade plates you didn't have to adhere to the 20 mile an hour lorry speed limit that was in place following world war ii that was a story i was told anyway and i can well understand it. if you're going from the south coast up to well up into scotland uh, you want to try and make some pace uh, i've got all sorts of stories people fortunately have sent me their memories and recollections of this vehicle um, whether it was in storage or when it was in use the first time we took this out after being redone we took it to race retro and this old boy wandered up and he remembered hitching a lift in this back from London to wherever he was going and uh, needless to say he was quite surprised to see that the old lorry was still around uh, other people have gone in touch who were relatives of Dennis Poor and they told me about it when it was in storage they used to play in it and so on and I've got letters from different people who also remember it and maybe driven it, etc. So uh, if there's any interest in a, a more in-depth history of this unique old lorry, because there's no other ones, um, please let me know in the comments section. Uh, like I say, the plan today was to fire it up, to hand run for a little while, and just give it a damn good wash because it was really dusty. But you just have to pick your weather and your, your timing because it's not a small thing to move. But yeah, that's a, that's a potted history of this 1940 three-ton Dodge truck. Um, like I say, made in Detroit, shipped over here late in 40, bodied here. This is original Dodge, the front up to the top of the windscreen up there is original Dodge. Then the big forehead, if you like, back and the doors is all bodied here. So it's a mixture of American and British. But as soon as I saw it, I just couldn't believe what a cool looking thing it was. Like I say, pre Goodwood Revival. There wasn't a great deal of interest in these old transporters. Obviously the BRM truck was around the old Leyland and the Acuria Coffs Comma lorry was well known and had been for many years but really other than that there wasn't a great deal of interest in the old hall as it was all about the racing cars. But since the Revival came along in 1998 the interest just blossomed really in the I suppose the theatre, if you like, of historic motor racing. So uh, it's not just about the cars now, it's about having the transporters and the old team equipment and the period overalls and the, the correct style racing helmet and so on. So it's a lot more about the theatre and the pantomime of racing back in the old days and having everything looking just as it would have done. And that was largely down to the, the Goodwood Revival, like I say, which is an excellent event. This truck went to the first Goodwood motor race in 1948 and carried on going there for several years it went i think it went to silverstone as well in 1948 it's been to shelsey walsh the prescott hill climbs like i say bowness rest and be thankful all these places it's been to circuits like castle coombe silverstone goodwood 
um, all over the place. Back in the early 1950s, Dennis Paul was quite a prolific weekend racer. He was an industrialist by profession, but he was a very handy racing driver. Pre-war, he was a demonstration driver for Atalanta, the, uh, the sports car makers, and he used to take our prospective customers in the demonstration car and scare them witless um, in a bid to sort of demonstrate their car's handling and so on. So he was a very handy driver, and he later went on to... Uh, he was persuaded to take on the running of Norton, Norton Villiers' triumph as it became, and so on. And uh, there was a time of difficult industrial unrest, etc., the 1970s. But of course by then he'd long since given up the racing. And this was just stored away in his barn with the Alpha that it once carried. Various people did try to buy the Alpha over the years, but they were shooed away. He had no intention of selling any of it, and this was stored alongside the car, the trailer, all the old team paraphernalia, and so on. So it must have been quite a sight when it came to disinterring everything. But I just think it's a fantastic looking vehicle. And uh, as soon as I saw it, I thought I've got to try and do something about that, and not just let it rust away completely, because I think that's what would have happened if it had stayed too many more years just dumped outside. I think a few people knew of its existence where it was dumped, but no one was really that keen on taking on the rebuild and I can I can see why because it was a it was a bit of a monster of a job. Would I have done it any differently now if it was going to wait to be restored now? Probably. But you know you just go with what you know at the time. But at least it survived. It's 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 still here. Because otherwise I don't think it would have been. Um, like I say it's over 25 years ago now that I found this. There's no plans to get rid of it. I'd like to take it to a few more of the former venues that it used to be at. I took it back to Goodwood in 2015. That was quite enjoyable. Nice to drive it back into the paddock, which was its old stomping ground. Like I say, he, Dennis Poor, used to live just down the road where Roundham Services now is on the M27. That's where his family estate was before the motorway and the services, etc., went in through part of their land and he moved. Back in those days, pre-motorways, that's where he lived and where he was based with the car, the Dodge and everything else. So it was really nice, very satisfying to drive it back into the Goodwood paddock. And of course I took it back to Donington in 2011, so that was good. So it would be nice to take it back to some of the hill climb venues that it used to frequent. Chelsea, Walsh, Prescott being the obvious ones. And just drive it back into the paddock. Sadly, without the Alfa Romeo in the back, but you can't have everything that's, I think that's squirreled away in a collection somewhere in America, no longer being raced. The previous owner did at least race it. I did meet him on one or two occasions. Here comes trouble. Right, first gear, clutch. What could go wrong? A short way back, but not too far. How was that? It was good. <laughs> a bit heavy? Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> right, we'll give it a rest now. It was probably around 80 years ago to this month that this was actually being bodied. Um, like I say, it came over late 40. It's a 1940 truck. And then it was, went to a Mulliners of Birmingham to be bodied as a crew bus for the RAF. 
so 80 years ago pretty much to this day it would have been in their workshops being built up I'm not quite sure how many of these were made there's several you know a reasonable number were built most were scrapped after the war due to their vast thirst from the 5.4 litre petrol engine one or two did escape some went into the traveling sort of fairground circus world I've seen photos of them converted into that I've seen a small number were converted for the South End Corporation bus company but I can't imagine they were used for very long and probably two or three went to become racing car transporters including this one um, but none of them survived this is the only one of these that's left as far as I know the nearest thing to it is a Fordson WOT which survives over East Kirby at the uh, preserved World War II airfield that they've got over there they've got a Fordson WOT with this body on the back um, which they restored a few years ago but as far as dodges go this is the only one and the, in fact there are very few three ton American built dodges of this era full stop um, there are a few Canadian ones around the D60s they seem to have survived in larger numbers but these were a heavier vehicle altogether um, still rated at three ton but everything was beefed up just a little bit more axles and everything the track was increased um, so the nose cone is common to all the sort of 39 to 47 job rated dodges but that's where the similarities end so it's quite an unusual survivor really uh, sometimes I just sit in the back and try and put myself in the position of the guys that used to be in the back with all their air crew gear on going off to the Lancaster or whatever it was they were going to fly and what was going through their mind when they were sat in the back of here knowing that there was a very good chance they wouldn't come back and many of them wouldn't have done so it's quite sobering actually sitting in the back sometimes and just sort of letting your mind wander a little bit so uh, while it's been preserved in its post-war guise it's nice that it does have a bit of history prior to being used to carry the Alfa Romeo Well, the old Dodgers had a really good spring clean and it really needed it. Just missed a couple of bits here and there. But yeah, she's looking a lot happier now. Like I said before, there's still a few little jobs outstanding. And I want to just I'll give it a bit of a service before thinking of taking it down the road again. Um, but there's no reason why it can't, it all works. But you just want to check everything so anyway i well, hope this little introduction to the jolly green giant was of interest uh, like i said i've owned this for over 25 years now it was a bit of a wreck to begin with but now it's looking a bit more ship shape so uh, thanks for watching please keep an eye on the channel for further updates and uh, yeah that's it for now more videos soon bye bye Dennis Ford with a big Alfa Romeo.